Hey everybody, me and Joe Boo are at Gearhead Junction in Pembroke, Virginia once again. This is my local Royal Enfield dealer to me, even though it's two hours away. Uh, I'm meeting up with someone to go do a ride and I've got some time to kill, so I figured me and Joe Boo would actually walk around and look at the bikes and I'd give my kind of thoughts on them and things like that. This place, they're, tr they're wanting to make this as a destination, as, you know, where you go, you know, on a ride and you know meet people here they didn't know i was actually told somebody hey meet me there and so i kind of played into exactly what they're looking for people to be doing um, they're going to set up like a big loop so you can you know meet here go do a big loop and then end the ride back here again you get like you know t-shirts you know i survived the loop, whatever loop they call it stuff like that they probably need somebody on a with a food truck or something to come out here and set up so I guess we'll start towards the lower end of the range and work our way up. And when I say low end, I don't mean this is like a bottom of the barrel bike or anything like that, but this is kind of their starter machine. I think it's the least expensive one they have, and it's Joe Boo's favorite, so we'll take a look at this thing. To me, this bike should fill the segment of the market left by the Suzuki Van Van. I think this, this would look cooler with a more 70s vibe going on, I think. I think that would make this bike look a little, little cooler. I'm six foot tall with a 33 inch inseam, 34 depending on what day of the week it is. So you can kind of see how I fit on this. Not bad, seat's not terrible. So this is kind of, they kind of market this more towards a, a, as a beginner bike, which I think is a mistake because the Meteor 350 and the Classic 350 have the same engine, why aren't those beginner bikes? You know, they don't, you could say they are, but they don't kind of market them that way or kind of present them in that fashion. Whereas this one, they do. And like I said, I think they should have made this a little more fun. It's not a bad bike, but I think styling, I think should be a little more playful and fun. It, just my opinion. Meteor 350. This is actually the only 350 I've ever ridden. I've never ridden the, the Hunter or the Classic. A friend of mine has one of these, and I've ridden his bike. And at that time, I had the Himalayan 411. And even though there's only a four horsepower difference between this and that, the power difference to me was immediate. I could tell before I left my friend's driveway that this had less power than the Himalayan. It wasn't much, but it was noticeable. This kind of feels like a like the old late 90s, early 2000s Sportster Customs, like the 883 Custom. Not quite drag bars on this one, but we're, we're kind of in that Sportster territory. Not bad, it's just not my style with forward controls, the more forward. I like more neutral riding positions because you kind of lose that hip steering ability with the forward controls if you catch my drift, so low speed, like how I complain about low speed handling on my Continental GT. When you get too relaxed, you start to lose that again. So you're kind of moving from aggressive to neutral to relaxed and with that neutral area, that's where I really like to be. So I think this kind of moves past that neutral area into the more relaxed riding position. And so yeah, you kind of, kind of do lose that low speed again, just going in the opposite direction of my bike. Ah, uh, the Classic 350. I'll be straight up honest. I would still like to add one of these to my collection. Just might have to do that at some point. I like this bike. I just think it's a classy looking bike. And if you look at the, uh, the models, you can actually see like different eras that they kind of uh, lean towards. So like this and the bullet, or you have that 1950s vibe. Then you step up with the Continental GT to the 1960s. The Interceptor, you get in that Southern California 1970s vibe going on. And with the Himalayan, you're, you're into the 80s. And then, you know, like the Hunter, the, the Meteor, both the Meteors and the Shotgun are more, more modern kind of designs. Uh, but I really do like these. I, I really think this is a nice bike. Which reminds me, I saw a Meteor 650 in the wild recently. 
just happened to run across a guy. I was like, oh, check that out. Ran over and talked to him. I hadn't seen one of those yet, you know, in, in the wild. I, see, I generally see Himalayans and interceptors. That was the first, the first super meteor I had seen. But I really like these. I'd like to have the uh, signal some marsh gray. I think that's right up my alley. Scrams and Himalayans. Scram's kind of an oddball character to me. I know they sell it as kind of their scrambler style bike. I don't know, maybe it's kind of like the, the Hunter. The styling, I just think they kind of you know, need help in that department. It's a good bike, but I, I'm not attracted to it, just me. So it's basically, the, the Scram is basically a stripped down Himalayan is what you're looking at. Not terrible, I'm sure it's fun. I had a ton of fun on my Himalayan. Really like that bike. They do not have the Himalayan 450. And to be quite honest with you, I think the Himalayan 411 has, has more character. And I think it's, you know, that's got future classic written on it where the 450 doesn't. Because kind of like the way cars and trucks are becoming more uh, disposable and expensive at the same time. You know, they don't build new vehicles the way they used to, so you don't keep them as long. Manufacturers only really care as, as to whether that vehicle will make it through the warranty period. After that, whoever has it's on their own. And I see motorcycles heading in that direction. You know, they don't expect you to buy a bike and keep it for a long time. And so things like the Himalayan 450, there's all kinds of things to go wrong with that bike down the road and somebody is gonna end up having a headache compared to something you know, more mechanical and analog like the 411. Just my take on it. I like the 411 much more than the uh, 450. Interceptors and Continental GTs. Now I already own the Continental GT and I've done a video side by side with the Interceptor. If you guys haven't seen that, go check that out. Just my thoughts on them. Uh, like I said, more 70s, you know, Southern California laid back vibe with the Interceptor, more 60s cafe style you know, vibe coming off of the Continental GT. And it's almost radioactive. It's just standing next to the bike, you know, just automatically makes me cooler. Um, this is the model with the black engine and the mag wheels. And oddly enough, for as much uh, fanfare as people wanted to, you know, as, as much as people said they want mag wheels and blah, blah, all that stuff, these aren't selling very well. <laughs> the mag wheel versions, for some reason, do not sell well. Uh, just based on actual sales, speaking with the owner here. For some reason, these aren't selling good. Go figure. And that brings us to the Shotgun 650. And this is a bike I love to hate. It's just kind of heartbreaking, in my opinion because I think Royal Enfield missed a trick with this bike. And it, and it all comes down to the styling, in my opinion. I think this is one of the nicest looking ones, this gray one, because it's all solid color. You know, there's not too much of this oversized graphics crap going on or anything, no, no 650 or anything on the tank. And I don't even like this little badge here. I think the, bad, the branding, they can get carried away with. This thing has Royal Enfield there, 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 and one on the front fender. So I think they just kind of went overboard on it, and I think they should scale that stuff back, keep this color. The, the other ones with the graphics and stuff on it, I mean, there might be a market for that sort of thing, kind of like the, uh, the Hunter 350. I don't like the graphics and stuff they did with that bike or the Scram. I think the graphics aren't great. But this one's almost cool. I think they just put, if they take the Super Meteor tank badge and put it on here with solid colors, you know, nice colors. They've already got the red and that, even that green, I think would look great on this bike because this is the Harley Davidson Sportster that they don't make in my opinion. This is a, this is a nice cruiser, cruising bike. 
and Harley Davidson has kind of left that mark. Says the cheapest Sportster you can buy now is twelve grand. You know, so here for you know seven. You know, I think I think Royal Enfield needs to kind of rethink their their branding and marketing strategy on this bike because there is a market to sell this bike into, and they're just not doing it. They're not attracting you know th that the Sportster type buyer to this bike, and I think that's what they should do. And so, like I said, I really want to like this bike. I think it's almost a really cool bike. Just needs a little help. All right, the Super Duper Meteor 650. I think this is one of the uh, higher end models here. With all the bells and whistles on it. Watch yourself, Joe Boo. And these are cool bikes. Forward controls, again, kind of like the, you know, even further forward than the Meteor 350. Not bad. I like it. I'm not really a cruiser type person anymore. But this is an interesting bike. I like these. And they've done a good job with, you know, the badging and the paint colors and things like that. I think they've just, you know, this is a classy, classy machine. I, I really do like this bike. I like what they're doing here with this bike. Put it that way. Well, I think Joe Boo's trying to arrange to take that Indian for a test drive. But while he does that, we're going to look at this Continental GT here with the front fairing on it. That's pretty slick. I'm not going to do this, but... Just different, like I said, it's kind of one of those things, you know, different owners do different things to their bikes and, you know, approach their own styling difference, you know, styling differently. And it's just, I like seeing things like this. It's not what I would do, but I like to see it. Pretty cool. That's the thing about Royal Enfield. It's not necessarily that the bikes are the latest and greatest and things like that. It's just the people who buy them tend to be passionate about motorcycles. Because you don't buy one of these to show off and be the fastest and things like that. You know, it's kind of a niche market. So everybody that I run into on a Royal Enfield, you know, they're just real people. They're down to earth. They're not posers trying to show off or belittle anybody or anything like that. It's just, you know, I think the, uh, the owners also make the brand as much as the company itself does. Figured I'd throw this video together just to take up some time and show you guys around my local Royal Enfield dealer. Thanks to Terry and everybody at Gearhead Junction for letting me and Joe Boo walk around. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.